Okay. What we're going to look at in these examples is finding how to find the GCF of two or more numbers. Now, uh, many textbooks will uh, show you how to show you uh, a method involving prime factoring each of the numbers. And the method does work, but a lot of times it can be a little lengthy. So this method uh, is a little shorter. Uh, it works best with uh, just two numbers. So if you have more than two numbers, uh, perhaps you can do it in uh, pairs. Work with one pair of numbers, uh, find the GCF, and then take that with the other uh, number or other numbers. So here our problem is to find a GCF of 20 and 14. Now something as basic as this one, for many people, uh, you may be able to just look at the two numbers and figure out what number gets into both. What's the biggest number that gets into both? Okay. Well, we're going to approach it a little bit differently. And this is using a division method. So we start by writing our two numbers, 20 and 14. And then we'll write a division symbol, but we're going to write it upside down. And then we look at the two numbers and just find anything that goes into both of them. So in this case, they're both even, so I can divide by 2. I divide 20 by 2, I get 10. Uh, 14 by 2, I get 7. And then inspecting 10 and 7, I uh, determine that nothing will go into them. So once you've done that, then you look at what you've divided out of the numbers. In this case, it's just the single number 2. And so that is our GCF. Now in the next example, we want to look at some numbers that are a little bit bigger, like 24 and 56. Now, with the numbers being a little bigger, you may not uh, be able to successfully find the GCF just by inspecting. And then again, maybe you can. We're going to apply our method, though. So, writing down 24 and 56. And then we look for something that will go into them. Doesn't have to be the biggest number. Just any old thing will work. If you can find a bigger number, that's better. It's going to cut down on the work. But it doesn't matter in the end. So here in this case, just like the last problem, they're both even. So I can divide both by 2. And so when I do that, I'll end up 12 and 28. Now unlike the last problem, uh, there's still stuff that I can divide out of both 12 and 28. Once again, they're both even. So I can divide by 2. 2 goes into 12 6 times. goes into 28 14 times. And then I'm still not done because I can still divide out of both 6 and 14. They're both even again. So take another 2 out. Finally, arriving at the numbers 3 and 7. And we know that nothing will go into both 3 and 7. So then we take everything that we divided out, the 2, the 2, the 2, and the other 2, and we multiply those together. And that will give us our GCF, which in this problem is the number 8. And we have one final example of the GCF. Here, once again, I've picked some numbers that are a little bit bigger, uh, 72 and 84. So I start again by dividing into the, each of those numbers something that will go into both of them. Well, they're both even, so I can divide by 2. 2 goes into 72 36 times. 2 goes into 84 42 times. Now, you could go ahead and divide another 2 out if you wanted to, and I'm going to actually take a cut down on the work a little bit and realize that, well, 36 and 42, they're just uh, both part of my multiplication tables for 6. So 6 would divide into both of those. So I divide a 6 into both. That gives me 6 left over and 7 left over. And nothing will go into both 6 and 7. So again, we take what we've divided out in this case, the 6 and the 2, multiply them together, and we get our GCF of 12.